Hello and welcome back. This is Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com in Westfield, Indiana. And you are watching Marksman TV. Today is a tabletop review and comparison of the iconic Israeli Uzi and the MAC, Military Armament Corporation Model 10 and 9mm. These two machine pistols, or this is really a machine pistol, this is classified as a submachine gun, are commonly misidentified and confused with one another by people who don't really know that much about them. Uh, they're very iconic. Usually you see them in a bunch of the 70s and 80s action movies. So this is a great opportunity since I have both to kind of delve into the exact details and differences between the two of them. Now, there will not be any shooting in this video, but I do have a dedicated video on the Uzi, which has me shooting the Uzi, which I will leave a link to in the description. And I will have a dedicated video on the MAC-10, which will also have uh, shooting footage and stuff in that, which I will leave in the description of this video once it's uploaded. So if that sounds interesting to you, please stick around, that's coming up now. All right, let's go ahead and just do a little bit of a historical background on the two. So the Uzi was designed in 1950 by Uziel Gall following the 1948 Arab-Israeli Israeli War. It was submitted for Israeli military trials in 1950 and it was officially adopted for service in 1951. Now it did go into service with the IDF Special Forces in 1954 and first saw combat in 1956 during the Suez Crisis. Now this would remain in service until its official retirement from the IDF in 2003 when it was replaced by the Micro Tavor. Now the MAC-10 has a little bit of a less distinguished history, but it was developed by Gordon Ingram in 1964, and it did see limited service with the U.S. military being used by the Special For Forces in Vietnam and also in Grenada. Now there were also other foreign uses and copies of this design because it is a very simple design, and it actually is very reliable, uh, but it just never really served much as a combat weapon. It's funny, if you go to Wikipedia, it actually lists one of the wars that this was used in was the Miami Drug Wars, which is kind of, it's funny and explains exactly why you see these pop up in 80s and 70s action flicks all the time. Now, the biggest difference between the two is sort of their classification. So the Uzi, the full-size Uzi, would be classified as a submachine gun, whereas the MAC-10 would be classified more as a machine pistol. I don't know the specific, you know, reasons for those, uh, so or sort of what specifications each classification has which would fall into these but my assertion would be that the uzi is really it's a two-handed submachine gun even with the stock collapse you really do get both hands on it it does weigh more than the mac 10 whereas the mac 10 with the stock collapse and you even you can remove the stock entirely uh, it was designed to actually be very usable without a stock at all and being able to be uh, used manipulated carried one-handed sort of like a pistol. So now the Uzi, there is the micro Uzi, which also would be classified as a machine pistol, but by doing so you drastically reduce the size and weight. And it did have a little side folding stock on it too. Uh, there are different versions of this, which usually came out in more of the commercial market where you could get more sophisticated stock apparatuses. And there's a, a Sage uh, lower receiver, I'm sorry, up, yeah, it's an upper receiver that you can get that, that extends the upper out and gives you place more room for your forward hand. Whereas on this, you really didn't have a lot of room for the, for the forward hand without the use of the suppressor or a little strap that would hang on from the bottom on this little bracket here, which you would just kind of hold on as just a kind of a rudimentary support. Now getting into that, the specifications of the two, the Uzi does weigh 7.72 pounds, has an overall folded length of 18.5 inches, and an extended length with the stock fully extended at 25 inches. The MAC-10 has a complete weight of 6.25 pounds, a collapsed length of 11.6 inches, and an extended length of 21.6 inches. Now, both of these use a direct blowback design and they both have telescoping bolts. So actually the way they function is more or less identical. They're just in two different packages. Now the rate of fire on an Uzi is around 600 rounds per minute, whereas the rate of fire on a MAC-10 is around 1200, so it's about double the fire rate, and these things really blow through ammo. And uh, again, I'm going to be taking this to the range to look up for that uh, outcoming video, and you'll, you'll see sort of uh, exactly how that works. Now both of these could utilize different buffer systems which you could purchase that would change the rate of fire. So you could actually slow this down to 600 RPMs, 
and you could actually speed this up to I think the typical the kind of the most available or military accepted rate of fire would be up to about 800 rounds a minute. Now here is the suppressor that I was talking about for the Mac 10 and uh, what this was actually developed by a company called Psyonix and at the time when this was first developed in the 60s uh, it was really a uh, kind of a breakthrough design it was very quiet it did a great job of suppressing the the kind of the noise of the, or of the, of the machine pistol um, and actually the design would be used in future developments and future designs by other companies uh, just because of how effective it was. It did have a two-stage design and you had this sort of larger area on the back and the great thing about that is when it was threaded on it gave you a lot more real estate to grip onto so it was a lot easier to handle two-handed with the suppressor attached but the negative about it is it did increase the overall length significantly, almost doubling the overall length, uh, making it a lot less concealable, which is one of the best things about the MAC-10 was how concealable it was. Now, they did have other versions of the MAC-10. The MAC-10 was chambered in 9mm and 45, and this one is a 9mm. There was also the MAC-11, which was a little bit smaller, and it was chambered in 9mm and 380. There is also a commercial, uh, commercial variant which came out many years later called the MAC-12. I believe that was pioneered by Cobra. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, and that was a semi-automatic only uh, 9mm and 380. So let's go ahead and jump into the stocks which is one of the most iconic things about both of these. So the kind of stamped folding or collapsing stocks were one of the key things in keeping the overall package of each one of these machine guns as more collapse, more concealable, and then when you are ready to deploy the submachine gun, it's easy to throw out the stocks and you're good to go with better accuracy and more control. So the Uzi, again, is stamped metal and it basically works on a hinge point right here in the center. What you will do is you just basically grab and squeeze, and when you squeeze, the stock will move up. And then on this side, there is a, show you that, there's a button right here, which you just push and it allows the second half joint here. So there's two joint points here to fold. So this will fold in here, and then you just bring this back. And when you bring this back and lock it in, it's actually locking around as a lug right here, which keeps the stock engaged to the back of the machine gun. So, oops, just like that. And it's not going anywhere. And now you have this much shorter package. Again, it can be fired one-handed, but it's just a little bit large. Even collapse, you'd probably want to get two hands on it. So the Mac works in a similar way, but it's a little bit different. So there's a button here you will push, and then once you push it, you will squeeze right here. So push that and then squeeze. And this particular one's kind of a little bit weird. But anyway, that'll allow it to release from its little notch back here under the back of the stock. You don't want to collapse it all the way yet because we haven't completely collapsed the this part of the stock. So there is a button right here on the bottom of the machine pistol which I will push allowing this to collapse. Collapse it all the way in then it'll lock in place and then this arm just comes over and it locks itself again in a second groove back here. And then that is fully collapsed. Again, and imagine without the suppressor on it, it is a very lightweight, very controllable one-handed machine pistol. Now to deploy it, again, you can just push, well first you'd have to hinge this open. So this is actually a little bit slower process than the uh, Uzi. You can lock it down and then push on the bottom here and then allow it to lock in place. Now the other thing you can do is go ahead and push the button again and just pull the stock off completely. And again, then you get the entire thing out of your way, it can remove the weight of it, you know, again, just making it very controllable, uh, very concealable. Now to deploy the Uzi stock, you really just kind of bang it here on the back that removes it from that lug and then it just swings open both joints lock. So this is actually in my opinion a much better design but you can tell based on looking at it a little bit more material, material and a little bit more complicated to manufacture but again at the end of the day it's still stamped metal so for a military production very cheap and very effective so better design. So let's go ahead and talk about the receivers on both. Now both of these are made from metal stampings just bringing in the Uzi real close, it does have more of an elongated receiver design. The bolt is longer than is the bolt on the MAC-10, and I will disassemble these in a minute. You do have a stamped metal trigger guard. There's your trigger. The grip just comes basically straight down from the bottom of the receiver. You do have a grip safety here, and your magazine releases here. It sort of works like a clothespin. You push it down, and it releases the magazine. 
Now this at the time was a very innovative design, putting the magazine inside the grip under the center of the machine uh, submachine gun. And that works in contour with the telescoping bolt. So the sort of opening on the bolt leads into the feedway from the magazine, which I'll, again, I'll show you at disassembly. Up at the top, this is your charging handle, which does have a cut through it so you can sight through the charging handle, uh, you know, effectively there. Your front sights, very similar to something like on an AR-15. They are uh, elevation adjustable here at the front. And then you do have quick range aperture settings, kind of a peep aperture here which is encased by two uh, sight protector ears here on the back. The top cover is also a metal stamping and the charging handle works independently from the bolt so it is non-reciprocating. Now up here at the top too is sort of this ratcheting uh, sort of arm here. You push back and it allows you to twist or unratchet the barrel like this. Well, I'm trying to do it one hand. It's not where you basically heard that. You do have this polymer uh, forward hand grip, which is screwed into the front, a sling loop point here. And of course, we already talked about the folding stock in the back. Now in the back here, this drum can also be turned left to right to move your windage. Like I said, quick elevation adjustments in the back and then your gross adjustments up here in the front. Here's the MAC-10, which is also uh, metal stampings and the receiver is basically broken down into two parts. You have your lower receiver down here. You can kind of follow this line. And then the upper receiver just kind of pushes back and line back here with the upper, with the uh, lower receiver. And again, all metal stampings, and this does have a parkerized finish. Stamped metal trigger guard. The pistol grip is basically just like a flat piece of metal that's been rolled into a rectangle. So very simple. And then you have this sort of polymer grip uh, extension to give better texturing of the grip back here, which is added to it as well. This is also an open bolt machine gun, just like the Uzi, and it does have a charging handle located at the top, just like the Uzi. And there are cuts, get it to focus, right there so you can sight through the charging handle. Now the charging handle is affixed to the bolt, so it does reciprocate when you shoot. You can give the charging handle a quarter turn and it locks it in place, just kind of a safety feature there. Now the front sights are just a simple post and a sort of a, just a peephole in the back. Again, all stamped, very simple, very rudimentary and very little adjustment for the user. Of course, here's your ejection port here and you can see the bolt, which is machined. It is the only machined part inside the machine pistol. And then you have your barrel with the threads for the suppressor. Now to switch out the barrel on the Uzi is a simple process on the Mac. It's a little bit more involved, which involves knocking out this cross pin here. Then you actually need a tool to wrap around the threads here to uh, release and, and unthread it from the trunnion. Now you do have different fire selectors on this. You have a safe and uh, safe and fire mode here. And then on this side, you have what looks like an AR-15 selector, which moves it between semi and full auto. So you have to keep kind of two selector modes in mind. Whereas on the Uzi, you have safe, semi and full auto. Now the magazine release on the Mac-10 is right down here. You, it's kind of European style. You push it down and then you can remove the magazine. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a field strip and talk about how the Uzi works. So we'll start by going ahead and removing the magazine. Now, you can check that it's clear by opening the bolt. Of course, there would not be a round chambered because it is an open bolt submachine gun. So what happens is when you're ready to fire, and I've dropped the bolt here, when you're ready to fire, you will bring this back. The charging handle will, of course, it's spring loaded and will return back to its home position on its own. And now the bolt's open and it's ready to fire. You then insert your magazine of loaded ammunition and then you fire. So when it's ready to fire, you just go ahead and pull the trigger. And it'll drop the bolt, chambering and firing your first round. It'll then, as long as you're holding down the trigger, go into recoil and just reciprocate like this, firing every time it goes back in the battery. When you let go of the trigger, it raises the sear arm, which would stop the bolt. Again, this doesn't reciprocate. I just had to do that to show you manually how it happens. Now, we will start with the bolt in the closed position. And you start by removing the top cover. So there is a latch here. Go ahead and pull back on and then lift up and off. And then here is your bolt assembly. You can go ahead and grab it kind of from the front, pull back slightly up and out. And then the buffer and buffer spring will come out with the bolt. Now, like I mentioned, the bolt is telescoping. So here's your ejection port here. And then right here on the bolt face, this is how this is where the uh, the fixed firing pin is. So what happens is this sort of sits inside the receiver like this. And then as you can see, this is where the magazine would be for it to feed. So what happens is when it goes into battery, so this would be its open position. 
when it goes into battery, it'll go forward, stripping the round, putting it into the chamber, and the bolt is going about this far forward. It's going all the way to the front of the submachine gun. So all the parts are telescoping on each other. Then it'll fire, go into recoil, go back to its full cycle, eject the round. Of course, you see the port cut here on the side of the receiver matches with where it is on the bolt. Go forward, strip another round, and it sort of moves in this position. Now the barrel, which is sitting in here, which I can remove, I can pull back this ratcheting arm and spin the collar off here. That'll allow my barrel to just pop out. So what's happened, sort of, with a disassembled look, is the barrel is sitting inside the receiver, obviously, and this sort of telescopes over it, like that. So it goes back and then there, and then it meets with the chamber. Of course, imagine the very front collar of the submachine gun is here. So this is sort of where everything is aligned, like this. So sort of pulling the guts out and holding it above. Like that. So it would sit right there and then reciprocate like this. And that's how it's moving inside of the gun, like that. So really, really cool. Um, basically how it fits inside the receiver is this is all stampings and then there's a collar here and a feed ramp. And this just goes back and like that lines up with a notch on the front and then you know it's there it's kind of self head space so it's very very simple then you just reapply the collar the mac 10 is going to be a little bit different so for ease of um, may, or for ease of disassemble i'm just going to go ahead and drop the stock off just to get it out of my way you don't have to do that though now you can go ahead and grab it and bring the bolt back and it locks open of course it's an open bolt sub machine gun or machine pistol actually just like the uzi but you'll see the charging handle stays back um, it moves back and forth, reciprocates. As long as I'm pulling the trigger, if I let go, it stops. Now, like we just saw, if it's on semi, if I pull it back, drop it, keeping my finger on the trigger, it's going to stay back. Letting go will reset it, and then firing it. And it's going to do that if it's in semi-automatic. Okay, now getting into the disassembly, there is a little tab right here on the bottom that you need to, it's kind of pushing into this cross pin, keeping it stationary so it doesn't walk out during fire. So you'll go ahead and push back on that tab and then simultaneously push on this cross pin to get it out. So I'll bring that back and then push on the cross pin. I'll use a little punch to kind of help me just push it out the rest of the way. There it goes. And then there we got it out. So with that cross pin removed, the two receiver halves can move apart from one another. Then here is your lower receiver which is again all just stamped and then your trigger control groups right in there. Very, very simple design. Now your upper receiver half is just you pull back on this and then wait for the charging handle to sort of hit this notch and then go ahead and remove it from the bolt and then the bolt can come out and then that's disassembled. Again, the upper receiver is very simple. It's all just stamped. There's your barrel, which goes back most of the length of the upper receiver because this is a telescoping design, just like the Uzi. Now to remove this requires, again, taking that out with a punch. And then you do need a tool to, to kind of break it free from the trunnion and thread it off. So it's not nearly as easy to remove as the Uzi. And then here is the bolt, which is all machined. And if you look at it, the buffer system is very similar to that of the Uzi. And it's really a very similar design, just a lot smaller. It's not really a lot smaller, but it is smaller. But it works the exact same way. It just telescopes over the barrel. Now that is all the time I have for you today on these. Thank you so much for stopping by and checking out this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by leaving a like. Also, if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit that bell notification button so that you can see anytime we post new videos. Again, I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and CheapGunsUSA.com. You are watching Marksman TV. I will see you next time.